Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality and today we are going to be making some really pretty fall book page flowers and they are super simple and they end up turning out so pretty. These are a couple that I've made so far. So what you need for this project you need a template or you need a set of nesting flower dies or if you have a Cricut file you could use that as well or a silhouette. I happen to have this nesting set of flowers. That's what I used with my Sizzix Big Shot. If I will find a link for these and put them down below as well as a printable that you can use if you don't have a Big Shot. So it's important to know you don't need to have that but it's just a little bit easier. You will need a book page. I happen to use old dictionary pages. I already die cutted out some flowers here. You will need some inks. I'm using distress inks so that they blend. I have a fired brick vintage photo and then this one is called spiced marmalade. Kind of fall colors. I have a little blending sponge here. And then I also have some metallic Waverly gold paint that I picked up at Walmart. Then you'll also need something to do your work on. I just have a paper plate here. Oops. And I have a little cotton ball that I use to add my paint. You can use a, a some kind of a sponge, like a makeup sponge or a stiff brush, maybe like a stencil brush would be good. And then you need a brad to go in the center of your flower. Or what you could do is glue the pieces together and then add like a button or something in the center. I'd choose the brad because it was easy, I didn't have to glue, so I have that. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my plate and I'm going to put my flowers down onto the plate. I'm going to pull you out here a little bit. There we go. And then what you want to do is just go and add your distressed colors in onto your flowers. So I'm going to start with the fired brick. And just add a little that, a little bit of that to my flowers. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of the brown vintage photo. And then I'll go in with my spiced marmalade. All right. So when you've added all the colors that you like, oh, you need a spray bottle of water. So you're going to take and spritz your flowers, just like one or two spritzes, depending on how fast of a stream, just put it on really light. This is actually two. I have a little tiny spray bottle that works better, but that's all I could find right now at the moment. So now what you're going to do is take your flowers, kind of let them drip off, 
and then you're going to scrunch them up, just kind of wad them up. Wad them up and let them dry for a little bit, for a few minutes. Not totally, because you want to be able to pull them apart. They're going to wad up. And if you have a separate plate, you can do that and set them on there to dry slightly. And after they've dried for maybe like five minutes, you could even take your heat tool and just give them a little heat them a little bit to dry them a little but then what you're going to do after they've dried almost all the way is kind of pull them apart and let them dry but still have them be wrinkled up like this because you want them to have that texture Even like that is fine, and I didn't even use the heat gun on that. And now I'll just let them sit there and dry until they're completely dry. I'm going to move these over so I can use the plate. Just set them there. I think they'll be fine. I already have some that I've made up here that are already completely dry. So I have all the different sizes. Some of them have a little bit more of the red brick on them than others. This one has more yellow, so I kind of like that because it just gives your flowers different dimensions, if that makes any sense. After they're dry, if you want to scrunch them up a little bit more to give them a little bit more texture, you can. Now what you want to do is start layering your flowers. I'm going to do two of the larger flowers and kind of offset them and then go in and add the middle flower there and I'm going to add two of those as well and then I'll take let's see I like this one because it's a different color slightly lighter so I have them layered up there I'm going to pull out one of my brads And what you want to do is punch a hole through them if you can't get your brad through it initially. I already used a piercer, a paper piercer, and pierced a hole through mine. All right, and then you want to take and just scrunch them up the way you want them. And now to add a little bit of shimmer to it, I'm going to use my, this is called Golden, and it's Metallic Waverly Paint. I already have a little bit on my paper plate here, so I'm just going to take my cotton ball and go over the edges, just like real lightly. And I also want to add some gold onto my brad, so I'm just going to sponge it on there. I like that. Just like that. I think that looks so pretty. So now you just have to let that dry. 
and assembled. I don't have many left here. I'll have to wait till these pieces are dry and then I will assemble that one. But it's that simple. It's really easy flower and it turns out looking so beautiful, I think. And these will look great on your paper crafting for fall. You can use them on an altered tag or a scrapbook page, mini album, or a junk journal page. So I hope you like this quick little tutorial. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Leave me a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality. Bye. God bless.